Hello everybody and welcome back to Addicted Fishing. Today is the first Snowpocalypse episode of the year and I'm out here chasing winter steelhead and I couldn't be more excited. We got Big Red in the water, we got Tiny Boy up front, and we're going on an adventure today. Thank you guys so much for being here. Drop some comments and some thumbs up throughout this video so that this thing gets pushed out there so more people can see it. Let's go have some fun. Okay, let's go time. And if you guys didn't already know, this is the most dreamy, perfect, amazing winter steelhead setting that you can possibly imaginably get. That's a lot of excited words there, but it is so rare in the Pacific Northwest to get these snow days like this. And it is absolutely mine and a lot of my friends' favorite to be able to go out and chase winter steelhead in it. I got some plans for today. We're gonna make some really awesome recipes on the bank, but nonetheless, we're gonna get started fishing. I'm gonna talk to you guys kind of through a little bit of what I'm using today. I got sink it series, I got worms, spinners, beads, a little bit of everything. And we have a lot of water to cover them all by myself again, solo raft trip yet again. So I'm gonna do as best as I can to catch one of these fish today. Conditions are perfect. Let's see what happens, everyone. Well, first hole was no fish. I fished it super hard. I'm gonna try it again from the boat. But this is absolutely just the ideal speed, the ideal water, ideal everything. If you steelhead fish or, tr or trout fish of any sort, you're probably looking at this thing going, oh my God, why didn't you catch anything? Really all I can do when I'm alone like this is, is cover as much water with as many things as I possibly can, which can be very time consuming. The days are short. So I'm trying to make the most of my time by fishing two or three different methods quickly down through the hole, starting at the top, going close, middle, far, two steps, close, middle, far, two steps, and just covering as much of the water as I can. Cause these fish are gonna be fresh. They're gonna be healthy and they're gonna be wanting to eat. So if I do find those fish sitting in those pools or, or any of those spots that I'm fishing, odds are I'm gonna catch them in the first couple of casts, depending on what I'm using. So it's anybody's guess. We got a long day. I got a good lunch. I got a good dog and we got a boat full of opportunity. Let's go fishing. A little bit deeper. Just got a little nibble on the way through there on that first cast. Just slowly working my way down once again. Uh, only so much daylight. So I'm starting at the top of every hole. I'm going through, I'm throwing everything I got at them. I got the whitehead red body, the old faithful jig on this rod. I got the guarantee worm over here with a redhead. I got a pink and an orange bead and I got a spinner. I don't know what else to use. Comment below if you, think I, if you can think of something else I should throw to steelhead today. I gotta just go to Red Haze. Plain and simp, no more fooling around. Maybe not. Psych. Oh my God, I have something. I don't know what it is. Oh gosh. Send the camera guy over to get some B-roll of these awesome rocks. <laughs> this awesome ice over here and I was looking down, I was actually fishing like this, fishing with my you know what, and got it. Got the first fish of the day, it's a beautiful little cutty. Oh my goodness. I better take a look at this thing. This thing could be pan size. Oh, I don't know, it looks a little bit small. It looks a little small, but I have my tape measure here, so I'm gonna take a look and try to figure it out. What a beautiful fish, oh my goodness. This thing looks perfect for what we're looking for. Looks a little short though. Well, he's a little short of 14. It's about 13 and a half. But what a cool, beautiful looking cutthroat. Look at that thing. Ate the bead, ate the orange bead. And it's a great way to start today. 
I'll take a fish, any kind of fish. Look at the beautiful color on that tail. Wow. Special little creature. My hands are freezing. See you later, dude. Nice. What do you think, Tyne? What do you think, Tyne? I thought that was a pretty good fish. Good way to start. And a great, and what better way to do it with the rod between my legs? Not even trying. Perfect. First cut throw of the trip. It was a beautiful one. I like it. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen right here. Come on, red and white, red and white, red and white, red and white. Santa Claus, I wanna get one so bad, you guys. This is such a perfect day. I wanna just be holding a steelhead in my hands. This is gonna start getting whiny. It's not as much fun to fish alone, I'm gonna say that. Lately, all of my buddies, Marlon, Cam, all those guys have been so busy that we haven't got really a chance to fish together a whole lot. But days like today are ones that I wish I had buddies like that to, to have around and enjoy this day with and cover the water. A lot of times you just need extra rods so that you're not having to cast everything by yourself all day long because it can be really time. Oh my God. Oh, I shot. Holy moly. I just got so slammered. My almost made my knees weak. You guys saw that instant replay. Oh my God. First little bite in this hole. I'm getting right back in there. I'm getting right back in there. I'm gonna get this thing a little more stinky though. Put some more of my water soluble on here. Here we go, going back in. Little hole rest in between. That was a grand slam bobber down. That was insane. Oh. Ooh, our bait is finally almost thawed. It's so cold today that my beautiful prawns that I brought to use for bait have stayed frozen, so they might turn into a meal. We'll see. But these things, I don't skimp on my steelhead bait. I really appreciate these things, and I like to feed them good meals. So I get these Argentinian prawns, they're the big red ones, and they're wild caught prawns. So actually, a lot of times, most of them that I buy get eaten rather than get used as bait. So finally, they're thawed out. Let's get a piece of shrimp on there, see if it changes our game. Rambo style on this fish. I really want to fish this little inside seam here. I feel like there's going to be a fish here. The, everything seems to be warming up. The snow's kind of melting a little bit, which I'm thinking there'll be that nice little afternoon bite. It's noon right now. So playing the conditions the best we can. That little warm up in the afternoon can do just enough sometimes to get these fish on the bite. So whatever is here should be pretty snappy. Let's get it going. Gotcha. Okay, it's time to stop messing around. I like the guarantee worm. I've caught some giant fish. It's kind of one of my very favorite big fish colors is that guarantee color that was a limited edition. So you'll have to wait for it to come back out again. Um, but I'm going with Old Faithful. I can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore. I'm going with the Old Faithful worm. I don't care what anybody says about it. One eternity later. Bum, bum, bum. Red haze. Black tail. That's the one. The knight in shining armor. The knight in shining armor. I'm just gonna stick with my red head. Red haze, ready to launch. What was that? Oh, there was something behind it. Let's see if there's any teeth marks. That thing went down way too fast. I don't know, pretty suspect. It's been an awfully slow day today, guys. It's been, a, it's been tough fishing. We've been fishing every single hole, every pocket that we could. It's already getting a little bit late in the day and I'm getting hungry. So I think what we're gonna do is find a little shelter, find some banks somewhere, enjoy the scenery and get some food in our belly and then get ready for the witching hour.
Wow. That is a truly one of a kind sight. So beautiful, the areas that we get to spend time in the Pacific Northwest. And that's kind of the beauty, I think, of just steelhead fishing in general, or any sort of trout fishing or river fishing, small tributaries, is that it is so amazing the adventure it puts you in, no matter where you go. You could be floating river for the hundredth time and you'll see something new every time and you see it in a new light every time. The river or the conditions of the mountains that you're in are never twice the same, ever for that matter. And so it's so great to come out here and enjoy a beautiful day with the snow on the ground. A little tough fishing, but that's okay. A lot of other great things have happened. It's time to do a little exploring. Let's hit the bank. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, addicts. Oh my goodness. What the heck just happened to me? Fish. Oh my God. After an all day struggle, I've made about 10 or 15 casts through there. I haven't touched bottom once and I just got hammered by a big fish. Oh man, that was a good bobber down. I had such a good angle on him too. I had a really, really great like downriver pursuit angle. That thing bounced, went up, bounced again, went down, and I just nailed it. Oh, what happened there? Dang it, I am getting hungry and crabby. The witching hour is upon us. I think what we'll do, maybe eat a little food, give this hole a whole rest, and then get back at it and fish this thing out till dark. Dang it. Well, without any further ado, I'm gonna do my special recipe for the day. What I think I'm gonna do, there's a lot of cool stuff over here in this little log jam. I think I'm gonna reclaim some wood and make myself a little bushcraft table to do my barbecue in on here. Let's get this going. So right down here, there's a little bit of, I don't know what kind of structure it was, but I wanna show you this too. This is the coolest freaking thing I've ever seen in my life. I think this might be going home with us. Look at this burl, everybody. It's like a root ball burl. And who knows, I'm not sure what kind of tree it is. Comment below if you do. But this thing has been completely washed out of the bank. And it's a pretty soft, but I'm wondering if we let that thing dry out, if we couldn't shave that into some really cool stuff with the chainsaw. Super, super cool burl. Comment below on what you think this is. I think this might be an alder or some kind of like a willow or something like that. But nonetheless, all these different veins and colors and super, super cool stuff. Looks like a giant radish almost. But here, this is this is what we mainly came to talk about. We got this little, ooh, it's got a lot of nails in it. Look at that, like an old piece of a fishing dock. It's already got boards in it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this little platform thing here, and I'm gonna get it on some level ground over here on some logs in this log jam, like so. That right there, that right there. And I might do here, Add a few more logs for height on this end. There we go. Beautiful. I'm gonna take some of these smaller sticks. That should do just fine. Sweet, we're ready to go. Wow, this is really working out, addicts. So I think what I'm gonna do here, uh-oh, is it that kind of day? I really do think we're gonna throw these shrimp on the on the pan. These things are still frozen. A little bit of water in there. Oop, not that one. So on tonight's menu is elk steak bites. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna unpackage some of my, my elk steaks. We've got some mushrooms, we've got some shallots, and of course, we got our shrimp that used to be our bait. Now it's our dinner. I'm gonna chop this all up and make this mouth-watering little dish here right on the side of the river. And it's just in time. It has been a cold, grueling day. And that's kind of the, the bittersweet part of winter steelhead. The days that pay off are ones that you remember forever. And the days that are tough fishing, well, they're just tough fishing. And you have to find a way to make it fun and keep the morale up no matter what. And that's why we bring some delicious food along with us. So what I'm gonna get this started off with is big chunks of mushrooms. I'm gonna leave these things big so they're nice and hearty. They go well with my steak. And this is the perfect meal for me out here in the cold weather all day. It's exactly what I want in my stomach to keep me going for the last little bit of the witching hour here. I'm gonna get these things all chopped up. Nice and big, beautiful. Now, 
for the shallot. Me personally, I love using these shallots like this because it's a perfect amount of onion to take on, on a trip like this or on the river or just out for lunch for the day. Or if you're camping, it's, it's nice because it really saves a lot of room inside that cooler or inside that dry compartment wherever you're keeping your onions. And it's got a little bit more of a mild flavor than a normal red onion too. So for those of you out there who don't like onions as much, these things can do really well for you in a dish like this. Nice chunk of butter to go with that. And this is ready to go on the grill. Ooh, just look at how beautifully colored that elk meat is. Just right. So I'm gonna chop this up into just nice little pieces here. That way each one of them gets a good seasoning. It gets nice and tender from my ingredients that I'm putting in this. And for the Jordan Kinnigi forgot item of the week, the grill top. Oh man, it's always something, isn't it? Comment below with the last big thing that you forgot on your last little adventure or last time going out fishing. Me, it always seems to be something. And today, it was a big deal. It was the way we were gonna cook. <sighs> Why? Why does this happen to me? Well, in the meantime, I guess, I'll just enjoy a hot cup of joe and sulk in my sorrow. <sighs> All right, so the mission has drastically just changed from can we catch a steelhead today to can we get a fire started before dark so that we can eat our delicious dinner. Man, I feel stupid, but something always needs to happen. Something needs to keep this thing exciting out here because the fishing sure didn't today. But that's winter steelhead fishing in a nutshell. Some days are amazing, and those are the days you fish for. Some days are a lot tougher. And some, for some reason, the conditions today did not prevail. But I'm gonna go find me a big cedar tree, and I'm gonna see if I can show you guys a really cool trick to start a fire when you have no other options to. It's starting to warm up out here. The icicles are falling. We may be in grave danger. Send help if we don't return. All right, everyone. Well, I truly have no fire starter, but I do have a lighter with me. So my goal is here, I'm gonna strip some bark and some dry limbs off of a cedar tree. And the a cedar tree can save your life if you're stranded in the wilderness, or at least just for the night. The nice part about it is there's always something dry and dead on a cedar at some point. You can see some limbs hanging down here. We don't need a very big fire to get this thing going. We just need enough heat so that we can cook. So I'm gonna try to peel some of this bark off and gather a little bit of wood and see if we can't get this thing started. Hi. So you can see underneath all this overhanging limb, we have some super, super dry bark hanging off these cedar trees. And what I'm gonna do is actually take some of this stuff and shave it down so that we get a really nice duffy fire starter that we can use. I'm gonna start my fire right on that rock there so it's not all wet. I'm gonna gather myself just a little bit more of this stuff and then we'll get started. So you can see how dry this stuff is under here. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with cedar wood. Take my knife and get as much of these shavings going as possible here. Try to keep them all accumulated somewhere here. Another great trick to doing this, is you take this stuff, put it right in the palm of your hands, and twist that stuff up and you see that nice little duffy powder that you start to get. Give us a nice something to work with. So we got some fire starter now. I'm reaching way up into the limbs of this stuff. You can see how dry and brittle a lot of this deadfall stuff is and these dead limbs of these cedars. And it's just sitting here ready for the pickings. Look at it, it's just falling at me. So I'm gonna break this up into some smaller pieces, probably cut it up with my knife just a little bit and get myself a good amount of firewood before I get this cooking fire going because I don't wanna be looking for firewood while everything's trying to cook as well. So salvage up a little bit more of this stuff, then we'll start getting it going. I'm gonna shave this down so I have some really nice, fresh pieces, some nice dry wood that I can add on to this once this stuff starts smoldering.
Oh no. Oh no, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it seems my lighter is dead. Only one thing left to do, go hungry and keep fishing. And so this is how the day ends, everybody. Let's go cook. Ah, what a mess. Well, it got cold, it got dark, it started snowing, and I said, hell, I'm not too proud to cook in the kitchen tonight. So let's get this thing going. So what I'm gonna do first, before we get this started, I'm gonna use a lot of Worcestershire in this recipe. I'm gonna take a little bit of Worcestershire and kind of get these pieces of meat marinating. A little bit of Montreal, a little bit of garlic, and a lot of the flavor here is gonna come from those onions and from those mushrooms that I'm sauteing here behind me. So I'm gonna mix this stuff up, get it marinating just a little bit before I toss it in the pan. And then of course, my shrimp. We're doing a little bit of everything today. We're eating our bait. Days like today really start to make me reminisce about some of the best days I've had on the river. Obviously today was a total flop when it came to fishing, but it was a beautiful day and I'm glad you addicts got to spend it with me. So what it brings to mind is one of my very favorite days that I've ever had on the river and it was last year, right around this time, and I wanted to share this clip with you of one of my very best memories in the near past. Check it out, it's pretty cool. I'm tip wrap, dude. What is that? Oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. I got him. That's a good fish. That's a big fish. It's big. I, I tip wrap so bad, everybody. That was so scary. I'm not gonna try to do much with this fish, you guys. This thing is huge. We don't have a net over here yet. We got a pretty good little spot to, to, to land this, but this fish, I swear, does not know he's even hooked yet. I got a pretty good hook set on him. Obviously, yeah. no line gave because I couldn't reel. Guys, this is a big fish. I was Moby Dicking me, dude. Wow. It was Moby Dicking me. He's not done. <laughs> That's a big one. That's a really big fish. Okay, get ready. I don't like the way you're doing this. It's bad, dude. He's got that, like, yep, yep, hump yep, back. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Gosh. He's completely wrapped around his head right now. Here we go. Here we go, Phil. Here we go. This is it right here. Yes! Oh. Good job, Phil. Great job, buddy. Dude, it's so girthy. Wow. It's a giant. Is there a fin? Yeah, it's a, it's a wild. Oh, it's a wild. Oh my Goodness, god. bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god. There you go. Oh, oh wow. my god. Yeah. That's, Dude, that's, that is a tank. That's that is Let's an let him relax. absolute tank. Chill out. Wow. That's a tank. Yeah. I think it's time to throw my bait in. Well, a meal suited for the river, but that ended up in the house. Mm. Let's dish up. Mm. Man, I needed this meal tonight. And I tell you, I think the shrimp or the bait, mind you, is almost the best part. We gotta get some protein in this and we gotta get energized for tomorrow. Cause the next few days we're going out to film yet another Stay Fishy episode. 
If you guys haven't heard about Stay Fishy, this is a new channel that we're starting. It's mainly just me and Little, and of course, uh, the Addicted Crew, but it's gonna be a lot more in-depth and behind the scenes look at what happens behind the camera and what these trips are all about and the culture, the food, and the adventure that's brought along the way. We're gonna try to bring you guys along even more in-depth on every single minute of these adventures. So be on the lookout for that, check the links in the description, and be sure not to miss them. The next update I have for you guys is about our third movie premiere. And this is gonna be in the Puyallup Sportsman Show and the Portland Sportsman Show. The one is in Puyallup, Washington, the other is in Portland, Oregon. So what we'll be doing is premiering our third movie, Addicted Alaska 3, Return of the Kings. And there are seats available in Puyallup and in Portland still. So if you're interested, check out the links in the description and be sure to come join us on an awesome night where it's a big community of people staying after the show and having a big party, enjoying one of the coolest salmon fishing movies I think we've ever made. If you guys want to see more awesome and fun videos just like you saw here today, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn that bell on. Please give this video a thumbs up and comment below and you can be the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thanks so much for tuning in everybody. You stay fishy. We'll see you out there.